Hi, I'm Tom, you're watching Sony 365. I'm back in the UK, I'm not in Miami anymore. It's a hell of a lot colder here, but I'm feeling all right because I have this incredible phone, the Xperia 1 Mark III, which I've been living with now for about four days. I asked you over on the community tab if you had questions for me about this device. Uh, I have about 200 questions from you, which I'm very grateful for. And what I will now begin the process of doing in this videos and all the ones that follow is answering those questions you kindly gave me. And I have some very good news for you about this phone. Let's get into it right now. So in this video, I'm going to tell you about the design of the Xperia 1 Mark III. I'm going to compare it to the 1 Mark II as well, which I've been using as my daily driver for most of the last year or so. I'm also going to make some comparisons with the S21 Ultra. I'm not going to talk about the camera tech in this video. I'm going to focus on the questions that you've given me on the display tech, the sound, and a few other bits and bobs. Uh, but let's, let's begin talking about the design. So for me, the best starting point here is to say, of course, this is a 21 by nine aspect ratio. And what that basically means is you get the full phone experience, but without having to lug around a wide, heavy, cumbersome phone, which I hate to say it like the S21 Ultra here, after a while that wears thin. You don't have that problem here. Unlike the S21 Ultra, of course, you've also got a headphone jack up the top, love that, and expandable storage which incidentally, you don't need a SIM ejector tool there. You just flip that open using a fingernail and you're good to go. You can even put a second SIM in there if you prefer, up to a terabyte of storage, by the way. It shouldn't be so difficult to find flagship phones that have both a headphone jack and expandable storage, but it is difficult because it seems the more we get into things now, the more uh, manufacturers want to take away from their flagships, not Sony, they're giving us more. Um, in terms of giving us more, uh, we have more buttons uh, down this side of the phone than we did with the Xperia 1 Mark II. Volume rocker, the power button is slightly recessed this time round and it's a matte finish. Uh, we've also got the, the big G, the GA uh, button. I'm just trying to avoid setting off my phones here and maybe yours. Um, and the uh, dedicated shutter button at the end there, which now has a textured finish. And I like that very much. Um, but yes, over on this side of the phone, of course, I have to say, it just looks superb, doesn't it? I mean, when we compare it, there we go, let's try and do that there. Um, with the Xperia 1 Mark II, you notice straight away that matte finish, which is so similar uh, to the um, S21 Ultra. Actually, it's a little bit lighter than the S21 Ultra. Um, and I like that very much because what it does is it sets off perfectly the, uh, the Zeiss uh, lens coating there, uh, which is obviously beautiful and ah, it's a bigger um, camera setup. I'm gonna come onto all the camera tech in a future video, but it's a bigger um, camera um, setup than before. It doesn't protrude quite as much, although the overall phone is actually thicker uh, than the uh, Xperia 1 Mark II. Uh, ever so slightly, that's mainly because of course it houses the bigger battery, uh, which we're gonna come onto in a second as well. But yes, first impressions, as soon as I took this out of the box, and by the way, included in the box is the 30 watt uh, fast charger. Again, you don't get that with the S21 Ultra, uh, no charger at all, um, and the um, USB-C to USB-C uh, cable. As soon as I took it out of the box, you can feel that they've, you can sense it immediately. They've managed to shrink the bezels. And so the screen actually feels bigger than it is on the uh, um, Xperia 1 Mark II. It isn't, of course, they're both 6.5 inches, but the, the, uh, the narrowness of the bezels at the side, you really do notice straight away. Technically, the bezels at the top and the bottom are also um, a little bit uh, smaller as well. I'll show you that now. Front facing camera here, it, the sort of cutout there is smaller, um, but really it's a very, very similar looking phone. But I've, I've got to say, the matte finish, that beautiful looking camera tech on the back there, this really, really, and of course, let's not forget, you only had to look at the Xperia 1 Mark II and <laughs> there'd be fingerprint smudges all over it. You don't have that problem with the 1 Mark III and I love that. 
So over on the front then, we still have stereo front facing speakers and I'm gonna tell you how good they are in just a moment. The notification light is still there. Again, it's another one of those features, isn't it, that keeps disappearing and it has been over the last few years, but Sony still has it and I love the fact that it's there. I also want to point out that the, uh, the front and back Gorilla Glass Victus and um, that's as good as it gets. So I'm very happy to see that there. IP68, uh, water and dust resistance there as well. Yeah, this is shaping up pretty good so far in terms of the overall design. But now let's talk about that display and I can begin answering your questions now. The most, I think, common question that I've seen there um, is about whether or not the display is bright enough outdoors and whether the display is bright enough in general. We all know, of course, that it's a 4K HDR, absolutely beautiful OLED panel, and it's the first in the world to have all of those things, as well as the 120 hertz refresh rate. This does actually feel like, um, it's almost like using a concept phone. It's just incredibly easy to live with on the day-to-day -day basis. But uh, yeah, let's answer those questions now. The display is brighter than the Xperia 1 Mark II. It isn't as bright, perhaps unsurprisingly, as the Galaxy S21 Ultra, but in terms of outdoor legibility, as you can see here, it really is a big step in the right direction. Now look, I have been doing videos on the tops of skyscrapers in uh, Latin America, in Panama City, in Panama. I've also done videos out and about in Miami on um, Ocean Drive, I think the last one, and actually weirdly enough, the next one, because we're gonna go back in time a little bit for a 10 Mark III review. Um, now, how well would this display cope in that kind of sunshine? I can't tell you because I'm in the UK and it's summertime here and that means it's quite cold and it's raining and it's a little bit overcast. But in the four days that I've had it, it's a big step in the right direction. I think you're gonna be fine, but I will confirm that in the next video. Hopefully we'll have had some sun by then. Now what I will say though, and uh, this is important if you want to make the phone as bright as possible as I have done here, you want to turn off creator mode you slide the brightness obviously up to max, make sure that adaptive brightness is on. Um, dropping the refresh rate down from 120 hertz doesn't really um, affect things too much, uh, well, at all as far as I can tell. Um, but yes, I'm very happy to see that the brightness is better, but we have all these incredible um, technological advances going on with the 4K 120 hertz. This is such a beautiful, beautiful display. It is really amazing actually to see 4K content on this up against anything, even, I mean, the S21 Ultra, it's obviously better than that. It's dramatically better than you'd see on an iPhone and I've enjoyed seeing people's reactions there. Uh, this is, as I said before, it feels like a concept phone. So the other question, uh, the, the probably, you know, the second most popular question there has been whether or not you can reduce the uh, resolution down from 4K in the settings there, and you cannot do that. Um, is that a problem? The, the main concern associated with that question has been whether or not the battery life is good enough. Of course, it's a larger battery now, 4,500 milliamp hours, to get you through a full day. And it is more than that, um, even if you're a power user like me. Now, of course, if you want to run down the battery as quickly as possible, playing 4K uh, video is gonna do that. But again, how many hours are you gonna watch 4K content? Um, you know, on the, on the bounce. All I can say is, you don't have to have battery anxiety here. You don't have to worry. Uh, I'm gonna come back to this in future videos to reassure you, uh, unless something changes and it suddenly starts becoming a problem, but I'm not worried about that. Will Sony in the future give us the option to drop down the resolution? Maybe, but as things stand right now, just changing the refresh rate, and of course you can change the color settings to your heart's content. Ah, this works very well for me. Now, I'm not the kind of person who takes selfies. Uh, that's literally, uh, quite possibly, my least favorite thing to do. Let's talk about the front-facing camera, because that's another big question. Specifically, is it better than the Xperia 1 Mark II? Now, I said that front-facing camera was pants. Uh, it is a little bit better. Yeah, no, it's better. Um, but again, it's not gonna be um, industry-leading by any stretch of the imagination, but it's, it's okay. So now let's talk about another issue uh, that you've had there 
a lot of concerns with screen rotate and whether it's any good or not. It's actually absolutely fine. It's just as quick, if not maybe a fraction quicker than the Xperia 1 Mark II. Um, I can only say that perhaps some of the YouTubers that have uh, been talking about that being a problem, I don't know if they had software uh, that was sort of not ready for release yet or something, but yeah, do not worry about that at all. You're absolutely fine there too. By the way there, just a shout out to our friends over at Gravy Beats. We use their music um, on this channel, uh, Trapanese. I absolutely love it and I always say, um, do check out their channel, Gravy Beats, it's fantastic. Give them a sub, they're nice people too, which uh, that helps. So another question you've asked me is about overheating and if that's a problem. Uh, all I can say is I've been trying to record 4K footage long enough to make the phone overheat. I haven't been able to do that. Um, would I have been able to do that perhaps if I was uh, back near the equator where I've been spending a lot of time over the last few years? I don't know, I mean maybe, but I will keep trying to make this phone overheat, but I haven't managed to do it so far. I think that's a very good sign. I'll talk more about uh, video recording and photography, of course, in future videos on this phone. Uh, right now, I just wanna focus on some of your main questions and concerns. Um, so, uh, now let's talk about those front-facing speakers. You're gonna like this. Are they 40% louder? I don't know, but they are definitely louder. That's good for music, of course, and watching movies and all that kind of thing, but it's also really useful, I find, for speaker calls, uh, using the conference calls, that sort of thing. It can get above any background noise even better than before. And that was a criticism I had of the One Mark II. I love the sound quality, but I wanted more volume. We've got that now, really happily. So what else can I tell you about the speakers? Well, when I've compared them here with the um, Xperia 1 Mark II, there is more bass, there's more information generally, more clarity. When I compare it with the S21 Ultra, that sounds a little bit louder still, but much more clumsy in terms of its ability to reproduce sound. And of course, it's not that proper stereo that we get here on the Sony. Um, it's all heavily down one end. Uh, yeah, I'm not too keen on that, I have to say. Generally speaking, this is pretty much as good as it gets in the sound department. And then of course, 360 spatial sound. An interesting effect when I'm using, for example, the fantastic new WF-1000XM4 in-ear um, earphones there, which I mean, that is a very cool effect. Uh, I wouldn't say it was much more beyond a cool effect for me at this stage anyway, but on the phone itself, it's much less successful in terms of creating that sort of impression. Yes, you can sense the difference to some extent and you sort of, well, I found myself thinking, oh, okay, all right, I won't be needing to do that again. But uh, yeah, why not? But what I will say is you need, if you want to use that setting, to disable DSEE Ultimate, which for some reason I always want to call DSEE Extreme, but it's not. Ultimate is the, uh, the correct word there. The other question there that you've been asking um, quite a lot is about the haptics and the, the vibration motor there. It is a little bit better than the One Mark II, but it was brilliant on the One Mark II that, I mean, watching movies and even listening to music with that feature enabled, yeah, I enjoy it. I think it's cool. I, I mean, it really is not, as I've said before in my One Mark II videos, it isn't just a gimmick, it really is cool. I enjoy using it um, and it is better. That's welcome news. Now, a lot of YouTubers love to have a proper whinge about the 21 by nine uh, form factor. I've never understood that. I don't get it and I definitely don't agree with it. Um, one of the things they say, of course, that it's difficult, you know, trying to reach with one hand all the way to the top of the screen. But that's why Sony has basically given us a few little bits, I call them sprinklings of Sony magic that work perfectly with this form factor. So one-handed use is easy. Um, you've just got to make sure that the phone's enabled for that. Um, you've also got um, this multi-window switch, which I absolutely love. Um, but side sense for me is the biggest uh, win here. I use it all the time. Um, it makes navigating this phone, whether one-handed or, or not, just absolutely brilliant. So you've got stock Android 11 here, pretty much, but with that sprinkling of Sony magic on top, which absolutely brings the form factor to life for things like multitasking as well. I mean, that was the case with the Xperia 1 Mark II before it and the other uh, Xperia phones, uh, but this time around, it's just been enhanced a little bit more. Um, Pop-up windows, great to using that. Um, and as I say, 
multi-window switch is very, very cool. But yeah, I'm, I'm very happy about the software situation here. Another question that you've asked me is, in terms of how many years of updates we're gonna get here and, um, and so on. Well, basically, Sony doesn't really talk about this publicly. I wish they would give us more, you know, all of us more information on it, but we're looking at about three years here um, of upgrades um, and, you know, regular security patches and so on. Um, would I like to see that become five years? I would. I have a feeling that could happen. I'm gonna explain why in a future video, but yeah, software-wise, UI-wise, it's great. So far, I can say, as I've sort of briefly mentioned before in this video, this phone does feel significantly better than the Xperia 1 Mark II in all areas, which of course you would hope would be the case. It isn't always the case when manufacturers bring out the newer model. It's not always better. There can be some real problems there. There aren't problems here. It is better in all areas. If you've already got an Xperia 1 Mark II, you will notice those differences. Is it worth the extra money or, you know, trading up? I'm not too sure about that. I'll give you my thoughts on that in future videos and then eventually the full review. Um, but what I want to concentrate on now is the camera tech and preparing that next video for you. I can already tell you that um, Sony's promises in terms of better low, low light performance are true and I'll give you much more detail in that in the next video. But yeah, I'm really excited about the Xperia 1 Mark III. A concept phone, and as you know, I'm, I'm, I feel very strongly about Sony products from an ethical standpoint, but it's also a concept phone with bleeding edge tech, but some kind of really thoughtful, useful features that make this phone so easy to live with on a day-to-day -day basis for many years. So it's the best of all worlds in that context. But yeah. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. And again, um, I am working my way to a new studio somewhere in Europe. And in the meantime, I'm gonna be taking the camera on the go. By the way, I bought this camera just for this. It's the Sony a7C uh, with a kit lens there uh, and a rubbish mic uh, until I can find a Sony one. It's so hard getting Sony stuff in stock these days. Um, but yes, uh, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. And eventually we'll be in our new studio again and maybe we can find another bonsai just like Bob the Bonsai, which I had to leave back in Panama. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.